morning, everyone. Welcome to our ninth weekly press availability for the Alaska House Majority Coalition. Uh, joining us today, we have from District 31, we have Representative Paul Seaton, who's our co-chair of finance, uh, representing Homer. We also have Representative Andy Josephson from District 17 uh, from Anchorage, that's our uh, co-chair of resources. And then here in Southeast Sitka, Representative Christ Tompkins, who is our chair of state affairs. Today is uh, day 57 of the session. Uh, we had uh, public testimony last night in House Joint Resolution to constitutionalize the permanent fund dividend. Uh, we have this week, we're visited by a number of foster youth and foster youth advocates. They're here um, adv advocating for a bill that's been sitting in the Senate dealing with uh, their issue. Um, and uh, we are on track to get done in 90 days. We have uh, three appropriating appropriation budgets over to the Senate. The Senate's over there. We expect to have the operating budget done sometime the end of next week. And today happens to be the 50th anniversary of Atlantic Richfield Company and Humble Oil and Refining Company's announcement of the discovery of oil on the North Slope in Alaska at Prudhoe Bay. Nice little nifty little calendar uh, fact. And with that, I'll turn it over to Representative Paul Seaton. Uh, thank you. And uh, yesterday we passed a supplemental budget, fast track supplemental, for those things that are really time critical for the people of Alaska. And so um, that went over with uh, community assistance, uh, Medicaid uh, payments that are needed to keep our hospitals and clinics and dentist offices open. Uh, and uh, as well as a number of other things, uh, emergency funding, uh, so we're happy to have that over there. This is a, that's the second uh, operating budget that we've passed to the Senate. Uh, and so uh, we see that they have plenty to work on on the operating budget. The first, of course, was the early funding of education. And so now we are working on the constitutional amendment, HDR 23, and that is looking to protect the permanent fund dividend in the best way we can. Um, it wasn't our first choice. Our first choice was a comprehensive fiscal plan, which would balance our revenues with the expenditures of the state and therefore take the pressure off of the Senate uh, reducing the dividend. Uh, of course, you know, in the past, they have proposed the absolute lowest share of dividend, and we are always uh, higher than they are because we really believe that that's an economic driver for the people of Alaska. So uh, that's what we're doing in finance. Thank you very much. And then uh, uh, our co-chair of resources, Andy Josephson. Thank you, Representative Tuck. The um, Resources Committee uh, uses all its available time. In fact, we're known for encroaching on the next committee's time occasionally. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we have taken up House Bill 27, which would ban flame retardants. We heard compelling testimony about that. We've completed uh, Representative Guttenberg's bill on our fire code, which is sort of an omnibus bill relating to uh, the negligent setting of fires. Uh, presently, we're hearing a bill uh, that moved out of Judiciary Committee, it's House Bill 330, on confidentiality of disclosures in DNR audits. Um, and uh, we're also hearing my bill to create the Tangle Lakes State Game Refuge. Uh, a couple other things that have been important to me that have happened in the last week or so. Uh, the State Affairs Committee moved uh, my bill, uh, an anti-discrimination bill, House Bill 184 out of committee. Uh, it was featured in the Empire this morning. I think that's sort of a monumental event uh, in the history of civil rights in Alaska. Um, and we also, uh, yesterday we passed House Bill 79, which was a very comprehensive and I think fair and balanced uh, an important omnibus bill on workers' compensation process reform. And so there's a lot going on, and I look forward to uh, the remaining 35 days of this session. Thank you, Representative Tuck. <clears throat> and as Representative Josephson mentioned, very excited about moving the anti-discrimination piece of legislation from committee. That's uh, important to me. and. Um, I think Representative Josephson is right to highlight that as a, a big achievement to a lot in Alaska who care about that issue. Um, State Affairs, as many of you know, is the Velcro Committee of the Legislature, and it picks up all manner of legislation from uh, all departments and agencies, and we're continuing to work through that legislation um, 
everything from the bill Representative Josephson mentioned to uh, bills relating to the adjutant general from Representative Tuck to secure rural schools from Representative Rauscher and many other pieces of legislation. But the, the big focus I want to highlight in state affairs is we're running with a process set up by co-chair Seton um, focusing on finance subcommittee statutory change recommendations that um, make the budget a little bit more efficient or create sort of waste or inefficiency. And so we have one bill already submitted um, running with a finance subcommittee recommendation and we have up to three more waiting in the wings and we have hearings both Tuesday and Thursday this week on those subjects and trying to make the budget as trim and efficient and frugal as possible, which I believe we as a caucus and certainly as a legislature really need to take to heart and, and try to walk the walk as well. So that's what State Affairs is up to. Thank you very much. Open up for questions. Please remind, just remind you to please uh, state name and affiliation. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press for Representative Seaton. On the resolution, there was um, a lot of testimony about the, um, I guess, the dividend itself, people saying, you know, hands off my dividend or wanting a more of a 50-50 split for whatever draw there was. You heard from Andrew, Angela Rodell about the Permanent Fund Corporation's preference um, for having kind of every the earnings reserve um, and fund be one. Um, I, I guess, how open are you to, to changes to that resolution? Are you open to more of a 50-50 type split? Um, are you open to some of the changes that uh, um, Ms. Rodell mentioned? And um, you're getting too many questions in line for me, <laughs> Becky. <laughs> uh, l let me focus first on you know the testimony that was there. Uh, a lot of people uh, want to protect the dividends, uh, and that's the entire goal of what we're trying to do here with the HAR. There was some misunderstanding. Uh, people in testimony said the people should have to vote on this, and that's what HGR uh, 23 does. It takes it to a vote of the people. It elevates the permanent fund dividend for the first time by putting even the terminology in the Constitution, because right now it's just in statute. And it changes the way that uh, the earnings reserve account could be uh, uh, drawn from to a three-quarter vote from a simple majority vote. So there's many production, protections. And, you know, we agree with people that uh, we want to make sure that there's a strong uh, dividend, a stable dividend into the future generations. And that's why we're taking this action, because what we have seen and we the comments from uh, Senate leadership have been that um, they don't want to ever have any new revenues until they've eliminated basically the dividend. They say it in different words, no checks uh, or no, uh, no taxes until there's no checks from the government. Um, but that's what it is. And so we're trying all efforts we can to make sure that the uh, dividend for the people is protected not only now but in the future and is stable. It creates a very uh, stable mechanism so that it doesn't vary um, wildly with um, returns, investment returns, it, because it's a, based on the value of the fund over the past five years. I don't want to get too much into the details, but our goal is exactly what they were testifying to, uh, but you know they were responding to a social media or an email list or something, uh, and I don't think they understood the bill because exactly what the bill is trying, or the resolution is trying to do is what they were wanting. So we're, we're in a, generally in agreement. The mechanism to get there is uh, what we are looking at. I guess the, yeah. the question is how open are you to oh. um, revisiting that structure, the formula, the numbers? And, and Becky, um, yes, that's a good question. And this is a committee process, and we've set a deadline for amendments to come in. We roll that back uh, so it's at 5 uh, p.m. today. And yes, you know, we need to get 27 votes for a constitutional amendment. And so, um, yes, we're considering all the different options of how we can get there and still being fiscally responsible for the state. You know, the reason we are in this problem is because we don't have any balance between our revenues and our expenditures. 
and the Senate has refused to change oil taxes. They've refused to do any broad-based tax. In fact, they say they're not going to do any uh, increase in or diversity of our revenues uh, until um, basically uh, it's the last uh, can kicked down the road. So um, I, we want to make sure we protect the dividend and this putting it in the Constitution in some way uh, that is constitutional and uh, doesn't draw uh, real problems is we feel the best way at this point in time. James Brooks from the Juno Empire. Um, what process do you envision for that? I mean, it, it's hard for me to see after listening to all the public testimony that the resolution has any chance. But I mean, what process do you see to try and gin up support for this? Well, part of it's going to be an educational process because if you heard the testimony, uh, you heard that that was, you know, there are a lot of people that didn't think it was going to go for a public vote. And, and that's, of course, inherent in a constitutional uh, resolution is that first it has to get two-thirds of both bodies, but then it goes to a public vote. Otherwise, it's just left in statute, and there's no notice in the Constitution at all. So I think that we uh, have to find the mechanism, but it's through amendments and working uh, with the minority, working among ourselves, and finding out how to um, best accomplish that. But it's a that's the process, and so there has to be something on the table to start with. Uh, we put forward what we think is a rational, reasonable, um, long-term solution. Uh, the 4.75% uh, of the total value of the fund uh, is a sustainable draw. We'll have to see how that gets um, you know, modified. Are there changes here or there? that um, can make that uh, so that everybody can support it? We're hoping so. I mean, I would love to see a, a three-quarter vote instead of a, a two-thirds vote to pass it out of the House. So, but that's what, that's what we're attempting to do, and this is the process. I mean, we're, it's an open process. Public is invited to testify, and we will have to make amendments based on, uh, you know, what's good for the state. You know, I, it, I might add something real fast to that, and um, because you, you, you express a little bit of skepticism about it, and, and there are some legal questions about whether it's may or shall language, and those sorts of questions remain open, and it's unclear whether it will ultimately come to the floor. But I would say, James, that there's a lot of agreement broadly in the caucus, and so that gets us a fair ways down the road to the votes we need. So it will come down to uh, if it comes to the floor, it'll be up to the minority to see what their interest level is. <clears throat> I would like to add that uh, what I observed last night was people were really upset about losing a dividend in the first place. And there's a misunderstanding out there on how that happened. And uh, they believe that many testifiers last night, uh, it looked like that they believed that it was already constitutionalized. And, uh, and, but that's what we didn't want to do. The Constitution is the highest, um, the highest uh, law of the land. And uh, by constitutionalizing it, it takes it away government's ability to be able to use it for, for other items. And uh, 